of you. And I knew this sermon was brewing in my heart for a reason. But the last couple of weeks, I kind of felt myself going through this same thing. So it really spoke to me, as I know it will speak to you too. Um, let me pray over the message. Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this time. Lord, I pray over this message today. Just help us to open our hearts to it, Lord, our minds, our ears. Just help us to listen and not just hear the word, but actually apply it to our lives. That we can see our life begin to change, Lord. We thank you so much for everything that you do for us. Now, Lord, I just invite the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of this building, Father, to speak to our hearts, Lord, to convict our hearts of, of what we need to do, Lord, to to see things begin to happen in our life. Father, we just, we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. So, today I want to look at something concerning something that we see a lot of people going through in today's world. Um, and I, I don't know why the Lord put this in here. Just, it's just a little bit about some electronics that we have. You know, the idea of the internet, cell phone, uh, texting. All these things are supposed to make our lives so much more convenient and easier. <laughs> They've actually made life a little bit more confusing. And, and maybe it's faster, it's faster paced. We're trying to keep up with everything that's going on in our life. And it robs us of our time. Uh, these things are, are time robbers of us, you know. We're always spending time on the cell phone, on the computer. They're just, they just rob us of our time. So we're going to get into a little bit more of that, but that's just a, I like I say, that's going, to have to, that's going to speak to somebody because we're going to get away from the electronics part of it, but I believe God had that in there for a reason because we're going to touch on it just a little bit more. But what I really want to talk about today, I want to take, at this, take a look at this word that we call anxiety. Anxiety. If we look up the word anxiety in the dictionary, we will find these descriptions. It says, it's a distress or an uneasiness of the mind. And it's caused by fear of danger or misfortune. So when we look up the word anxiety, it's a distress or uneasiness of the mind that's caused by fear of danger or misfortune. In other words, afraid of what could happen, afraid of what might happen. It's not even certain that it is going to happen, but it could happen. And that when we're so worried and fearful of it, that it begins to mess with our mind. It, you know, when I saw this, it's, it's no wonder that it talks about, Paul talks about how we should keep our mind on Christ Jesus. We should keep our mind on the things of Christ. It's no wonder the Bible says to keep our mind on that. This scripture says when we allow anxiety, it distresses the mind. And then, not only does Paul say that we should keep our mind on the things of Christ, the Scripture tells us also that God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. So, we really need to grab a hold of this sermon today because this sermon could change our life. If we, and I'm not talking about just coming here and listening to it and saying, oh, that's a good message. I'm talking about taking this sermon apply it to our lives so we can see our lives begin to change. Now the Bible talks about how we can be hearers of the words. In other words, we can come to church, we can hear the sermons, we can read our Bible and let the Lord speak to us uh, through the Word of God. But if we're just hearers of the Word and we're not actually applying it to our lives, we're not going to see a whole lot change in our life. We've got to take those words that we hear and we've got to apply it to our life. Be doers of the Word. And when we do that, then we will begin to see things begin to change for the better in our life. So when I looked up the word anxiety and I saw this description of distress and of uneasiness caused by fear of danger, 
And those are just a couple of things that popped into my mind that the Lord gave me. Is That's why we need to keep our mind on Christ and that He did not give us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. It also goes on to say uh, about anxiety in the dictionary, it says to be earnest, but, tense, but a tense desire and eagerness. It says it's a state of apprehension and a psychic tension occurring in some form of mental disorder. Mental. Mind. Anxiety, it goes on to say, is caused by fear, worry, disquiet, and a fear of failure. A fear of failure. It also says... Normal physical functioning is disrupted. Man, when we are, when we have anxiety in our life and it is beginning to mess with our mind, it will disrupt your everyday life. In today's everyday life, all these electronics that we were talking about is meant to give us a better quality of life. But is it really? Yes, see, these things that are meant to be good, Satan can take them and turn them bad. The internet, our phones, all these things. It can be good. It can help us. But we've got to learn how to be in control of these things. We've got to control these things in our life, not let these things control our life. Yes, it can be good, but it can also take control of our life. When we look at the word anxiety, we can see that it stems from another word that we see and know too, too well. Anxiety stems from stress. And let me tell you, all these so-called great electronics, they're causing more stress on our families today than what we know, than what we want to admit. For an example, cell phones. We can't even go out and eat as families anymore without our phone, you know. It's like when we go out and eat, I, I, I'm just as guilty. I do the same thing. The first thing I do when I go to sit down, I sit my phone right next on the table. So what I do is I, we, have, we go out to eat with our families. We have our napkins. We have a knife, a fork, a spoon, our phone, and a glass of something to drink. We have to have our phone with us. Well, here we are trying to spend time with our families, and yet we have our phones turned on, and as soon as it rings, we've got to answer it. Maybe it's a client. Maybe it's maybe if we own a business. Maybe it's an employee. Maybe it's your job calling or an emergency. You know what, what, what we need to do is we need to learn how to turn our phone off while we're spending time with our families. I remember when we went to a... Uh, at the church here in Yukon and they were having a revival and I remember what the pastor said that was bringing that revival he said my son began to text me because I got texting on my phone you probably remember this and he said uh, he said it got to a point to where he wasn't calling me anymore he was just texting me and he said finally there was one text that I got and he said I never responded back and he said, weeks went by, and he said, the son called me and said, Dad, did you not get my text? And he said, yeah, I got your text. And he said, well, how come, you know, I didn't hear anything back. He said, let me tell you something. When I'm not here, when I leave this earth, when I die, you're going to miss hearing my voice. Start calling me. So that pastor said, I took texting off my phone. If you want to talk to me, call me. Let me hear your voice. Hear my voice. Go out to dinner, and I put on, you know, I, I put on here, go out to dinner and wash those tables around you. But you know what? Don't even look at the tables around you. Just look at the table you're sitting at. Because here we are trying to have family time as a family unit. You know, the family that God brought together. And we're here we are trying to, and what I'm talking about are things that are stress, putting stress on the family. These electronics, these things that's supposed to make our life better. 
And, and, and here we are as a family unit that the God, that God has brought together. And here we are having dinner. And yet, instead of spending that quality time together, we're texting, we're on Facebook, we're playing games, and we're sitting there in a restaurant. Look at all the tables around us and see how many people are doing it. It's sad. Electronics today are causing more stress on our families than what we know. Anxiety stems from stress. Like I say, I don't know why that, I, that's the last of the electronics part of this message, but that was in there for a reason. God has that for somebody. Anxiety stems from stress. Anxiety and stress comes from fear, worry, doubt, uncertainty, and a failure, and a, and a fear of failure. These feelings come from situations that we cannot change. We cannot, when, when, whenever we are in a situation that we cannot change, that's when these feelings try to rise up in our life. The last couple of weeks, I know I brought this, these exact scriptures, and I'm, and, and I'm talking to myself, but I wonder when we're actually going to grab on to these promises of God and apply it to our lives. Because in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it tells us, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil, and it shall be health to your navel and marrow to thy bones. We have got to learn to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Try not to understand every situation that we find ourselves in because I'm telling you, we're not going to understand it. There's no way that we're going to understand. That's why we have to just trust on God to get us through whatever it is that we're going through. And when we get to a point in our life whenever we begin just to, just to say, you know what, Lord, I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know what to do, but Lord, I just want to trust you that you're going to get me through this and that it's all going to work out in the end. Maybe not in my timing, because right now in my timing, I want it done today. I want it over. I want it finished. But I know, God, in your timing that it's going to be handled and it's going to be okay. Until that time comes, Lord, I need you to direct my path, as it says right here, that he will do when we trust him with all of our heart. Not some of our heart. Not one day we're like, oh God, I'm going to trust you with this. And then the next day we're, we're like, oh gosh, this just doesn't want to work out. Is God, does he really know what he's doing? Why is he telling me to do this? I don't understand. And then the third day we're like, okay, I'm going to trust God. That's not, that's not trusting God with all your heart. You haven't really cast it upon the Lord like God said to do. When we find ourselves in a situation that we cannot change, and yes, when we find ourselves in these situations, a lot of the times it is because of our own doings. When we find ourselves in situations that we cannot change and that's causing all of these feelings to come towards us, a lot of times it's because of decisions that we made beforehand that led to this point. And, and they're decisions that we did not seek God and to direct our path before we made those decisions. It's just, it's just something that looked good, so we died right into it. We didn't pray about it. We didn't ask God to lead us in it. And because of that, now we find ourselves in trouble. And instead of going to God with our problems, we're allowing fear, anxiety, stress, and all these things to take control of our lives. Now, when these things begin to happen, all we can do is go to God in prayer and ask Him to guide our steps. And let me tell you, I don't want to just say that lightly. I don't want to, you know, I brought a message on this a few weeks ago, whenever it was, and I don't want to say, hey, every time you get a problem, don't worry about it, just sit down, just pray about it, the God's going to handle everything. I'm not saying don't do anything. There are times when you go to God in prayer and you cast things upon Him. There are times when we have to learn to sit back and allow God to handle things for us. There are times that we do that. There are also other times when we have to wait upon the Lord in God's timing. 
And then we have to learn to be patient and allow Him to work in our lives. And there's also times whenever we cast things upon the Lord that we actually have to do the leg work and do things to put things into motion. God is going to show us what action that we have to take. But we have to keep our mind, our mind has to be on Christ. It has to be on the Lord. It can't be distressed with anxiety, fear, and doubt, and all these other things. Our mind has to be on Christ. And when it's on Christ, God can speak to our hearts with that small, still voice, and He will direct our path in what situation uh, to, to, or what direction to go in that situation. So there's times when we do have to take action to get things done. When this time comes up, it is vital that we go straight to God in prayer and ask Him for His guidance to direct our path. It is vital. If we know that we have to set something in motion, I always, use, I always like to use the example of getting a job. You know, we can pray for a job, we can pray for God to give us a job, but unless we actually get up and go out and apply for that job, how are we going to get the job that we want God to bring to us? So that's, that's like an ex a good example of how sometimes we got to get up and put things in motion. If we let stress and anxiety and all these things take control of our mind, we're not going to hear that small, still voice that, that God speaks to us with to direct our path. I want to look at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 again. I, don't, I want to remind us just exactly what it says. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. You're not going to understand. Whatever, Just apply this to whatever you're going through. You're not going to understand. Instead of trying to understand the situation, just acknowledge God. God, I know that you're there. God, I know that your word tells me all I have to do is trust you, believe in you, and that you'll take care of everything, every need that I have. And your timing, that's what your word tells me. And Lord, I acknowledge that, and I know that you're going to come through for me. And when we do that, it says, He shall direct your path. That word shall means it will happen. It's going to come to pass. It shall happen. But when we're wavering back and forth, and there, i got a scripture about that coming up, when we're wavering back and forth, He can't direct our path because we have so much distress in our mind that it's not clear to hear what God's trying to tell us. I see a, I don't know, I don't know, I see a lot of people walking around with anxiety and stress and fear and doubt, and believe me, I'm going, I have gone through it the last couple of weeks myself. So this sermon is for me also. When we try to handle things on our own without God's leadership, this is when we start to lose control of the situation. When we lose control of the situation, this is when those feelings of anxiety and stress and worry, and that's when all of these feelings began to attach themselves to us. We say, well, I just don't know what to do in this situation. Well, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord. And if you don't, and, and you know, if the, if the Lord lays on your heart, okay, you need to do this, and you say, I don't know how to do that. I don't know what, I don't know, I don't even know where to start with that. James 1, 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally, and that shall be given to you. So if we don't know, if we're not sure how to do something, if, just like this ministry, when God laid on my heart to start a ministry, I've never done this before. I have to go to God and let Him direct my path in all this. I have to go to God and ask for wisdom and knowledge because I don't know. And this scripture says, if you lack wisdom, ask God and He will give you that wisdom liberally. It goes on to say, but you have to ask Him in faith. You have to believe that God's going to get you through. He's going to give you the right, He's going to give you the right knowledge, the right wisdom to get through that problem and that situation. 
You have to have faith in God. It says nothing wavering. We have to go to God and ask for wisdom. He's going to give us that wisdom. He's going to direct our path. But we have to ask Him in faith, not wavering. In other words, like I said earlier, one day we're saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to trust you. The next day we're like, I don't think this is working. I don't know what to do. Then the third day we're like, okay, I'm going to trust you. That's, not, that's, that's wavering. And it, it, it compares us to being tossed about to and fro like in a, in a, in a storm. I want us to see something. I want us to, to realize that when we're like that, when we go back and forth like that, I want us to see what the Bible, this goes on to say in this same scripture in James 1, 5, it goes on to say, if we're wavering back and forth in our faith, God, I want to trust you with this. Okay, God, what's going on? Well, why are you letting this happen? Why is this... Lord, I want to okay, Lord, I don't understand why you're doing this. Lord, what? if we're like that, this scripture goes on to say, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Do we see what's going on here? Anxiety, stress, fear, doubt, worry, depression. All of these things that try to attach themselves to us like a leech sucking the life out of us. God is saying, we have to trust Him with all of our hearts. Try not to understand it. Acknowledge Him. Then He will direct our path. And if we're not sure how to handle it, ask Him. Without wavering. Ask Him in faith. Knowing that His promise, this Word is a promise to us that's going to get us through any situation, problem that we're going through. When God told Noah to build an ark in a place that hadn't rained, and He gave him all the dimensions, told him exactly what to do, God gave him the wisdom. He gave him the knowledge. Noah didn't sit around and say, well, God, don't you think we need to do this and build it this way? God, don't you think we need to come over here on this side of the boat? And he didn't. No. He moved with fear. He did exactly what God told him to do, and because of that, he and his family were saved. He didn't wave back and forth. He had faith knowing that when God said to do something, he did it. He didn't waver back and forth. He didn't say one day, well, God, I just don't know if I... Why, why am I building this ark in a place that had never rained? No, he trusted God. God told him to do it, so he did it. He listened to God. God spoke to him, gave him every dimension of that boat, everything that he needed to do, and that's exactly what Noah did. If Noah would have wavered back and forth in that, Halfway did things, you know, and tried to do it his own way. I guarantee you, when that rain began to pour, I guarantee you, if Noah tried to do things his way, he would have had anxiety. He would have had stress. He would have had fear. You know why? Because he didn't do it God's way, and now he's starting to have leaks coming to that ark, and it's starting to flood inside the ark. Does it make sense? When we do it God's way, God will get us through, He will direct our path. There's no need for us to have these type of feelings. When we don't know how to handle a situation, all we have to do is seek God and ask for His wisdom. God will direct our path. You know, it's really pretty sad and quite sad to think in today's world, and don't get me wrong, Anxiety is a very real emotion. It's a very true, raw emotion. But it's also something now that we can go to the doctor and they can prescribe medication for. Let me make it clear, I am not one of these guys who say don't ever go to the doctor. I believe that God gave us doctors, He gave us hospitals, He gave us medications to overcome some of these things, that so that's what God's plan is. But, sometimes I think we go too quick. Uh, in God, if we go to God and put it in His hands, we would find that a lot of times, 
We can save ourselves a lot of time and energy and money instead of running to the doctor every time we need something. Just go with God first. If God, want, if God wants you to take that medication, God's got that doctor there. God's, everything in this world, God is in control of all things. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. What I am saying is put it in God's hands as soon as you begin to have these type of feelings. Now, like I say, don't, don't get me wrong. Anxiety is a very real emotion. But nowadays, just like with anything else, they, try, they, they can give you medication to cover up that emotion. You can go to the doctor and they can say, oh, you got anxiety, take these pills. And those pills will cover up those emotions. What needs to happen is people need to face those emotions and make necessary changes in their life to fix the problem rather than take a pill to cover up the reason that the emotion is there in the first place. Just like I said, when we come to church, we need to listen to God's Word. We need to listen to the sermons. When we're having a Bible study, when we're reading our Bible in our own times, and God is speaking to our hearts, we need to take those words and apply it to our lives, as I said earlier. We have got to face these emotions. What's going on in my life that's making these emotions begin to come up in my life and then do something about it? See, God gave us feelings. He gave us emotions. Or should I say, He gives us convictions. See, a lot of times anxiety is nothing more than sin in our life. You can go to the doctor and you can take a pill and you can cover that up. A lot of times anxiety is sin against God. We're trying to run from it. It's uncomfortable. We don't like that feeling. I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes it is. God gave us feelings. He gave us emotions to let us know when something is not right in our lives. Why do we want to cover that up with a pill, with medication? We're supposed to feel things. We're supposed to, to feel what life gives to us. Taking pills, they do nothing but alter and cover up those feelings. When we begin to have the feelings of worry, fear, failure, pressure, depression, on and on, the first thing we need to do is go to God. We've got to remember just exactly who we are in Christ. Remember, we are God's children. When we are saved and we have the Holy Spirit in us, we are God's children. But I want, and yes, it, yes, even God's children can have these feelings. But when these feelings try to grab a hold of us, we have got to rise above those negative feelings and seek God. This is when we begin to speak good things into our life. An example: if we're having financial, uh, if we're having a financial uh, struggle in our life, and it's beginning to cause stress, anxiety, and these types of negative feelings in our life, this is when we got to begin to speak good things into our life. We Instead of sitting around and saying, I'm broke, instead of sitting around saying, it's never going to get better, instead of sitting around and saying, why is all this happening to me? It's not ever going to get any better for me. Then guess what? That's exactly how your life is going to be. But if you find yourself in a financial situation, a financial problem, Begin to speak. Begin to, I am God's child. I am God's child. God has told me, as long as I'm a giver, as long as I'm a tither, as long as I'm faithful, as long as I'm serving the Lord, He's going to take care of my every need. He's going to bless me. I may not see it right now, but I know that my blessing's coming. I know it's on the way. I am a child of God, and God has said that He will take care of every problem that I have. We've got to speak those things into our life. Now, I want to, I want to look at some scriptures. This sermon is going to be a, a few minutes longer, but I think it's such an important message that we have. I, I need to get through this. Psalm 56. I want to start with uh, verses 
3 and 4 in Psalm 56. But then I want to read the whole thing because I, I, want, I want to uh, apply this to our life today. But I'm going to start with verses 3 and 4 in Psalm 56. It says, What time am I afraid I will trust in thee? In God I will praise His word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. In other words, when I find myself afraid, I'm just going to trust in you, Lord. In God, I will praise His Word. In God, I put my trust. I'm not going to fear what flesh, what this life can do to me. Now I want to read this whole psalm because it reminds me of Christians today, how people are always attacking the Christian. They're always going after us. They're always trying to pull us down. This is what this psalmist is saying. He's saying, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fights daily, oppresses me. My enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me. What time am I afraid I will trust in you? In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are evil against me. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape my iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into the bottle. Are they not in my book? When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. This I know, for God is with me. I don't know. He's saying all these people can rise up against me. They can try to pull me down. They can try to hurt me. They can say things about all these things. But you know what? This I know. God is for me. It is in His Word I will praise. It is in Him I will trust. I will not allow these feelings to come against me. In God I will praise His Word. In the Lord I will praise His Word. In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man can do to me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises to you. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not you deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? I love what he says. This psalmist says, you have saved my soul from hell. You are, in other words, you are my salvation. You have saved me from hell. Can he not take care of our everyday life? <laughs> he saved our soul from hell. He is our salvation. Can he not take care of everything that we go through? Psalms 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. And remember, anxiety stems from fear. Proverbs 12.25 says, Heaviness in the heart of a man makes it stoop. In other words, anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. But a good word makes him glad. A good word makes him excited. A good word makes him happy. And this here is the good word. That's why we need to put it in our mind so our mind does not become distressed. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my right hand. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Be not anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. In other words, when you go, don't just go to God and tell Him what you need, but give Him thanks. Tell Him, thank you, Lord, for everything that you do for me. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you take care of me. And, Lord, I do have these things I want to cast upon you. Give Him thanks. And let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And remember what the dictionary said. It's no wonder that he said, go to him in prayer, giving thanks and, and letting your request be known. Let him know what your problems are. He knows what they are, but he wants you to tell him. He wants you to go boldly before God and tell him what those things are, although he already knows it because it shows that you do have faith in him when you go to him. And he said, he will guard your mind. And what did the dictionary say that anxiety is? 
It is a distress in the mind. God said, I will guard your mind. I will protect it. Isaiah 35, 4 says, Say to those who have anxious hearts, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and He will save you. And there are many scriptures in this book that tell us how to defeat fear, which is anxiety, stress, depression, but I saved this scripture. It's kind of like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It's such a popular uh, scripture, but I saved it for last. We hear it all the time. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. Cast all of your care, all of your care, all of your care. doesn't matter how big you think it is. doesn't matter how small you think it is. It don't matter. God don't want you to ever think, oh, it's such a small thing that it's going to be a burden. It's just going to bother God. I can do this on my own. No, God said cast all of your care upon Him. Listen to me. If you try to cast even just the littlest problem, if you, if you try to hold those instead of casting it upon God, no matter how small it is, if you try to handle it on your own, it's going to fester and it's going to get bigger, it's going to get bigger, it's going to get bigger, and the next thing you know, Satan's going to start to use all these feelings of depression, anxiety, stress, fear, doubt, all these things to start to weigh you down. Listen, these are real feelings, real emotions, and they will find themselves attached to the Christian heart if we let him. Something to keep in mind when we talk about these words of stress, anxiety, fear, doubt, depression. These are all words that are opposite, opposite of how God wants us to live our life. They're opposite. God wants to live our lives with happiness, peace, joy, contentment, victory. So the negative feelings, if they're not of God, they're of the enemy. The Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. And believe me, when you begin to get anxiety and, and stress and fear and doubt and worry, these are confusion. This is confusion. All, all those feelings cause confusion because then you're like, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know. What am I doing? What do I do next? I'm so confused. I don't. God, that's not of God. That's of the enemy. Real quickly, I want to take a look at two examples of how God gives us victory over these type of feelings. First thing I want to say before I get into these two things, I want to say that when we are saved, when listen, to, when you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have the authority. You have the authority in Christ Jesus that when these feelings try to leash themselves to you, try to grab onto your life and just try to suck the life out of you, you have the authority in Christ Jesus because He lives in you when you accepted Him. You have the authority to speak against those feelings and get them away from you. In Jesus' name, you have that authority. Now, if you never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I can understand why people would want to go to the doctor and try to get medication to get rid of those feelings. Because if you don't, listen, if, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, there is no authority for those feelings to dwell inside of your heart because the Holy Spirit is there. It's just like Satan and, and demons. They cannot, they, you cannot be possessed of demons if you have the Holy Spirit there. You cannot be you cannot have, a, they cannot grab hold of your heart, these feelings of anxiety and stress and all these other feelings, if you have the Holy Spirit in your heart. Because the Holy Spirit is there to lead and to guide your life and to protect you. Listen, you are a temple of God when you are saved. You're a temple of God, and if you keep your mind on the things of Christ, you have the authority in Jesus' name to keep those feelings from attacking you. Keep them away. But you also have the authority to allow those feelings to enter into your heart. It's really up to us how we're going to handle it. If you're not saved, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, and you don't have the Holy Spirit already dwelling there, 
And then those feelings, they can dwell in your heart. And I can understand why people wouldn't know what to do except go to the doctor and try to cover it up with medication. I would hate to think that Oh, that's just a terrible thought to think that the Holy Spirit's not in our heart and, and, and there's a void and there's an emptiness and, and we're allowing those feelings of anxiety, fear and doubt and stress and worry and all these other depression and all these other evil thoughts and, and, and the intentions of Satan to dwell within our heart instead of letting the Holy Spirit dwell there. Now I want to show us through Scripture exactly what I'm talking about. I want to start off in Mark chapter 5. We're talking about, um, we're going to be looking at the man that was possessed by, by devils. I want to show you here two examples. Verses 2 through 13, it says, When he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs. He's in a, this man that we're talking about, he's in a cemetery. He's, he's, in the, he's in with the tombs. He's a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, not even with chains, because he had been bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked. This guy was so crazy. This guy was so out of it. This guy was such a lunatic with these evil spirits that they tried to bound him up and he would just break through. And, and, and it's, we'll, go, we'll go on and see how this guy was cutting himself. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? He was cutting himself. Why? Because it says right here, it's an unclean spirit. These feelings that make us do things, anxiety, stress, fear, and all these other things, depression, is an unclean spirit that the enemy places upon us. When we have the Holy Spirit in us, no, we cannot be possessed by demons, but we can be oppressed, which means... He cannot come within us, but they can do everything to make us feel depressed and down. And, and as long as we're feeling these ways, guess what? We're not doing anything for God because we're so worried, we're so fearful, our mind is getting distressed. We're so... That's the way an enemy wants us to be. He wants us that way because when we're that way, we can't do anything for God. Always, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs. He was crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus, he ran. Now, we're talking about the demons that's inside this man. He's, he's got possession of this man. He's cutting himself. He's yelling day and night. He's screaming. He's cutting, cutting himself. He, he's lunatic. And then he sees Jesus. So he runs to Jesus, and it says he's, he began to worship Jesus. We're talking about the demons that's inside of this man. He cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. See, Satan and all his demons know that their day is coming. The day will come when Jesus comes and cast him into the pits of hell itself. We're talking about in the last days, the rapture and all that. They, and this, these demons are saying to Jesus, you haven't come to torment. You haven't come to send us. To, it's not that time yet. What I'm trying to say is even demons, even Satan, have to worship God. They have to get His permission before they do anything. We're going to see another example in the same Scriptures. Jesus said... Come out. Come out of that man. Come out of him. Thou unclean spirit. And Jesus said, He knew who he was. But he said, What's your name? And he said, My name is Legion, for we are many. What's that mean? There's one Satan. But Satan has legions of demons. What's that mean? They're unnumbered. They have to dwell somewhere. They're unnumbered. He besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was. Now I want to. I want us to, to, to recognize this. 
So this, these demons are inside dwelling in this man. This man is cutting himself, going crazy. He's cutting himself. He's yelling. He's screaming. Nobody can contain him. He, he, he's just so strong and, and, and with, with all these demons in him that they try to bound him up. He breaks through the chains. But Jesus walks up and says, get out of him. Now they have to dwell somewhere. So... I want us to see this because I want you to see how this oppression, these feelings, these things of Satan, the enemy, it alters who we are. It alters how, what we are, it, our, our emotions. It alters, it, it affects us. It's like anxiety, worry, stress, all these things, unclean, they're, they're just evil spirits, they're unclean things trying to grab a hold of us to pull us away from God. I want us to see that after he tells them to leave from this man, there's a herd of swine, and they're just minding their own business, and they're sitting there, and they're grazing, they're eating, and, and the demon said, can we dwell in them? See, they're asking Jesus, can we dwell in them? And Jesus said, go. As soon as they got and dwelled inside those swine, the Bible says they violently, they became violently, they violently ran down to their death. We have to realize these feelings, these emotions, they're, a, they're, they're of the enemy. They're not of God. They're not